Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. While COVID-19 vaccination is ramping up here in the United States, there's still a critical need for treatments to help those who do get infected with the virus. Experts say that uh, getting treated soon after diagnosis gives folks the best odds of avoiding severe disease or hospitalization. We're here to talk about a treatment option is Dr. Janelle Sabo, Global Therapeutics Platform Leader at Eli Lilly and Company. Welcome, Dr. Sabo. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me on the show today. It's really a delight to be here to talk about COVID-19 therapeutics that could be quite helpful in the high-risk patient population. Well, we've been hearing a bit about uh, one type of treatment um, having to do with antibodies. What is this antibody treatment and how is it administered? Yeah, so neutralizing antibodies are a type of new therapeutic class for COVID-19 infection. They are um, antibodies that are able to attach to the virus and allow it to be neutralized, and then the human body can quickly clear it. What that means practically is that it's decreasing the viral load in the human body, allowing an individual's natural immune system to then fight the infection. We know that these early administration of these neutralizing antibodies really has an opportunity to decrease the potential bad outcomes of hospitalization, ER visits, or even death. Is any patient uh, who's been infected uh, a candidate for monoclonal antibody treatment? Not any patient. What we found is actually many patients will recover beautifully with Mm -hmm. no um, additional therapeutics. They simply need to take good care of themselves, rest, and stay at home under quarantine. And we find that they'll recover really well. But there is a population that is considered high risk. These are individuals that are over the age of 65 They could be a bit younger, say 55 or older, and have a significant comorbid condition such as hypertension or cardiovascular disease, maybe lung disease. They could be overweight with a BMI over, uh, say, 35, but they could even be younger, down to the age of 12, with significant medical conditions. So a conversation with their healthcare professional becomes really important to determine whether or not uh, treatment is right for them. Now, just to be clear, uh, these are are not vaccines. These are treatments once you have been diagnosed as um, positive. Is that correct? How do they differ from vaccines? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really, it's a very common question, uh, both among healthcare professionals, but also among their patients. Sometimes describing these complicated biological treatments is is really difficult with patients and healthcare professionals. So to make it very simple, vaccines are used to prevent disease. So here we're giving an injection. Uh, These are going to then help decrease the chances of actually contracting Mm COVID-19. The COVID-19 therapeutics are a class that can be used when somebody actually contracts the infection and now has virus on board in the human body. Um, So that's really the fundamental difference between the two. Hopefully we'll see a continued decrease in the infections with vaccines but we know that the vaccines are not 100%. Uh, So therefore, there will still be some underlying amount of infections and COVID-19 therapeutics will be important for those individuals. There's also individuals that won't be eligible or can't take the vaccine or choose not to take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Uh, They'll still be at risk for infection as well. And here again, this class can play an important role. So I've just received a positive COVID-19 test, whether it was a rapid test or, or whatever. What should my next step be? Your very next step should be um, after you sort of get over the shock and the, you know, the frustration that you've actually gotten the infection, you're probably starting to feel a bit crummy, um, is you really need to reach out to your healthcare professional, one that you trust, somebody that likely knows you well. If you can't, uh, telemedicine or other options are going to be really important. But the important thing is to have a conversation with a healthcare professional. They're really in the best position to understand you and your background and to have a conversation with you about whether COVID-19 therapeutics are appropriate, Mm -hmm. um, and if so, when those should be administered and where you might be able to go. So they would be able to help me actually find uh, an appropriate uh, distribution spot for these antibody treatments. They will, but we also know that healthcare professionals are incredibly busy, and Mm -hmm. from time to time, it's hard for them to keep up with where are all of the infusion centers in their local area. Thankfully, there's a resource available both for healthcare professionals and for the general public, those patients that may contract COVID-19. Going to combatcovid.hhs.gov will allow you to find an infusion center. Once you get to the website, Scroll down just a little bit because it's not on that first screen. And there will be a little button. I think it's kind of reddish pink, and it will say find treatments. And if you click it, it'll be an interactive map 
that allows you to determine a radius around where you live of all the infusion centers that are located nearest you so you can pick one that makes sense for you. Now, I did say that experts are saying that getting treated soon after diagnosis gives you the best chance of uh, avoiding severe uh, symptoms or even hospitalization. What is soon after the diagnosis and why is it so Mm -hmm. important? Yeah, so these class of drugs, this COVID-19 therapeutics neutralizing antibody class, needs to be administered within 10 days of Mm. symptom onset. On average, by the time you don't feel good or you think you may have COVID-19, you get tested and you get results. Typically, that's about two or three days into the symptom onset. This is an ideal time, actually, to go ahead and seek treatment. The earlier in that 10-day window, the better. Uh, But within clinical studies, we studied the overall time period. And in this time frame, patients will benefit from this class of therapeutics. Now, is that across the board for positive diagnosis, whether comorbidities exist or not, that 10-day period there? Yeah, the 10 days applies to anybody that's eligible for the COVID-19 therapeutics. Again, the high-risk population, those that are a BMI above 35 or maybe elderly or perhaps they have significant comorbid conditions, Mm -hmm. this is the patient population that these therapeutics will potentially be able to help avoid both hospitalization, emergency room visits, and even potentially death. Have you been hearing reluctance to be treated with this uh, monoclonal antibody treatment as we've been hearing about the reluctance to receive the vaccines? Not to the same degree. Um, Really, the issue mainly is actually around awareness and access and making sure that people know that the class is available. And neutralizing antibodies are different than vaccines. Uh, These are not something that uh, prevent this over the long term. They're really an immediate treatment and they're eventually cleared out of the body. Um, So we don't really hear the same resistance, but the awareness is really important in two fronts. Number one, that patients know to get tested as soon as possible so that they will hopefully be able to get it within the right window. Mm -hmm. But number two is that healthcare professionals feel comfortable talking about this new therapeutic class. And so here there's a lot of resources available on combatcovid.hhs.gov or on lily.com COVID resources. Um, Here you can find information uh, both for patients but also for healthcare professionals that gives them information about what is a neutralizing antibody, who are the right patients in much more detail than I'm describing today. But it also talks about the safety profile and gives additional information about the outcomes, but also what the infusion is like. And so this will really answer most questions that healthcare professionals and their patients may have. Is there anything that you'd like to add, Dr. Sabo? Yeah, I think the most important thing I would add is it's to have a plan. Uh, So I often tell people, um, make sure you have your COVID-19 plan. You don't want to become sick. I know everybody's masking up and socially distancing. Uh, But when you contract COVID-19, there's a lot of emotion that comes with it. You can feel overwhelmed. You've got the fatigue. You're not feeling very good. So having that plan ahead of time, where are you going to go to get tested? Who's the healthcare professional you're going to talk to and where's that infusion center closest to you? It just makes it a much smoother conversation and it's something that you're prepared to have. Um, And so I would really encourage your listeners to think about what is their plan um, if they become um, sick with COVID-19. So I thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about these treatments with you and the opportunity they have to reduce hospitalization in this high-risk population by 87%. I'm up to 87% in the high-risk population. So I appreciate your time so much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. You as well. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Janelle Sabo. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download a SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.